Well, let's talk about mutual inductance. That's actually the next chapter in our book there. And what does that mean? Well, if you, if you remember from circuit one and the beginning of circuit two, we said if you have an inductor and current going through at I, this is L, it's going to be a voltage drop right here, plus to minus V equals L di dt. Well, this is now what, what mutual inductance is. So imagine now if you have a current going through this inductor. This is L1. And right next to this inductor, there's another inductor. Are you going to have a voltage right here? Is there going to be a value? Well, what's going to happen as the current goes through this inductor creates a flux. In all these directions. And if this inductor is close enough to this, if it is close enough to it, it will be an induced voltage right here. Now, how do we figure what that voltage is equal to? First, we need to know what the mutual inductance here. What is the value between these two? So, this is called the mutual inductance. And it really depends on how far this from this, what's the material between them, how much flux is going through it. In circuits here, most of these problems, this value will be given to us. Almost all the problems in our class, this value will be given to us. So if you have, I try to make the notes in advance so this way the video will be short. Oh, that's not it. There we go. If we have a current going through L1 and L2 is right next to it and the mutual inductance is given to us, then the voltage here, we need to decide if it's plus or minus that's coming next but the voltage here is going to be the mutual inductance of 2 from 1. The mutual inductance on 2 from 1 times di dt of this current, because this current going through that. If I sip 2 is going through this one, then V1, the voltage here, V1, is going to be the mutual inductance of on 1 from 2, I call that 1 from 2, this is 2 from 1, times the derivative of this current, because this current going through that. Now, what you're going to see when you look at the book is a dot putting on these inductors. That's called the dot convention. So I drew some diagrams for us, and I'm going to calculate what V2 for each one. So let's talk about the dot convention. Why is that dot important there? So here's what you have to know. If A current entering the dotted terminal of one coil produces an open circuit voltage with a positive voltage
reference here as reference at the dotted terminal. of the second coil. So let's go back and revisit this one. That's really what the dot convention is. A current entering the dotted terminal. Let's take this example. Notice there's a current entering the dotted terminal. This is the dot terminal of this one. Produces an open circuit voltage with the positive voltage reference at the dotted terminal of the second coil. So let's watch this one. I already jumped ahead and marked this one. Going back to this one from circuits one, if a current enters the inductor is going to mark it plus to minus. So we have a current entering this inductor is going to mark it plus to minus. My dot here for this coil is plus, which means the effect of this current on this, the dots have to match. So if this dot is positive, that means this dot is positive. That means that end is negative. Now notice V2 here is labeled plus to minus. Notice the dot, plus to minus. So V2 is equal to the mutual inductance here, M di1 dt. Now let's look at the second one. The current entering the dot, so here we go, it's going to mark this one plus to minus. That means this dot here is going to match whatever this sign here. So since the dot is plus here, this dot is plus. That means this end is a minus. Compare the two of them. Notice V2 is backward. So V2, it's the negative, not positive here, negative, the mutual inductance between them times di1 dt. Let's look at the third one. The current enters this one. It's going to mark it plus to minus. Notice my dot is negative here, which means the effect is going to be minus and plus here. The dots have to match. That means V2 is going to equal V2. It's plus here, but it's minus. Minus here is plus, so it's minus M di1 dt. <clears throat> and let's look at v2. I mean the last one here. This is plus, this is minus. That means the dot has to be minus here. And notice the sign of v2 matches these two signs here, so that's positive M di1 dt. So it's really important to know is it positive or is it minus. So V2 is labeled plus to minus on the top and this is minus to plus, that has to be a minus. If V2 was labeled plus to minus and this is plus to minus, then that's a plus. And that's how the dot convention works. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, <clears throat> let me take another example here quickly, because I know the video is going to be too long. <clears throat> 